Hello there, fellow humans, and after the E50M has been elevated to be even stronger than it already is, let's have a very quick overview of the E50, the vehicle they have to get through to get to the almighty E50M. Obviously, this vehicle is nowhere as strong as the tier 10, and this vehicle, combined with the Panther 2, I personally recommend grinding them in fun modes most of the time, especially the Panther 2. Whenever Mad Games is on, that is a great mode to obtain the Panther 2 in, because Panther 2 in Mad Games is excellent, in regular, regular battles, eh, it's not so nice. However, this vehicle still has quite some decent capability, especially if it's fully upgraded. Two of the biggest downsides of this vehicle include its very weak penetration, and also the only 5 degrees of gun depression over the front of the vehicle. Because if you have a look at the stats of the tank, I mean, 3k DPM, 220 standard penetration, that is pretty bad. Aim time and dispersion is pretty good. You do have 8 degrees of gun depression over the side of the vehicle, but unfortunately not the front of the vehicle. And the mobility on this thing, for being as heavily armored for a medium, and as big as it is, mobility is quite good for that. But we'll have a look at the armor a little bit later. First of all, have a look at this game. Now, 2k damage already, just sniping people in the back that don't pay attention. And now here comes the Waffenträger. And what I want to do here is I want to get up close to him. I want to get very close. Just, and now I'm going to wiggle my vehicle back and forth. You see that? I'm going to wiggle my tank to make the chance of him missing or hitting a part that has a lot of armor as high as possible. Don't just sit there. It's like, I mean... Sure, I'm saying this in a World of Tanks, in World of Tanks split, so you'll never experience this, but it's like in bed. If you lie there like a fish, it's not going to be fun. You gotta move around, right, to get the action going. Something like that. I mean, you'll never experience that. You're playing World of Tanks Blitz, but uh, tr trust me on that one. Uh, sort of. But now, again, I'm still full HP, and there's only two enemies left right here. Which means I can now go and push this T95, because even though... It is a terrible move to normally go and face hug a vehicle like that, given that I have the support of a team. He has no chance of ever surviving this before me, and you can see the penetration right there. I have to use premium ammo to go through the cupola on top of the vehicle, which is just not very nice, but 4,000 damage nonetheless. The armor of the E50 is quite interesting. Obviously, lower plate is a weak spot. The upper plate is 320 millimeters effectively on flat ground, which is very good. And now, 5 degrees of gun depression over the front, can't really play hull down too much, but 240mm on the turret is quite good for this sort of angle, and on the flat ground it is 230, so not too bad right there, but most premium rounds can still pin it anyway. Sides are quite good at 94mm, which means you can side scrape up to a certain angle, uh, but obviously the turret is going to become weak a lot quicker, so you have to watch out and turn the turret if you're trying to side scrape this vehicle to something like this so the maximum you can go is about 15 degrees um because if you hold the turret straight and you're 15 degrees off this is going to be very easy to pen so turn the turret to the side and then you have about a 15 degree window where the sides are going to be very effective but obviously cupola on top doesn't really matter uh, too much it can be penned it can be hit uh, but ideally if you are in a vehicle that really can't pen the front of the turret with premium ammo like an stg then the cupola is the only option but if you have any other vehicle that can pen the plate of the turret, just go for that because it's a much safer shot. Or just wait for the turret to slightly turn and then pen that. Now let's get into the second battle with this vehicle that you hopefully don't have to spend too much time on. But now I can see the STB peaking, so I'm already going to pre-aim the STB before he even has a chance to fire at me first, right? Predict what's going to happen next. Here I'm just going to drive past and I'm probably going to get shot by a tank. Yep, there you go gonna get shot by a tank destroyer but in this case i'm fine with that just to take this position right here and have a, the advantage because if i drive up the other side the heavies are gonna shoot me like the e 75 the sheridan they can shoot me if i drive up this way if i drive up the other way the tank destroyer can shoot me so it doesn't really matter i just want to get into this position right here and hold it down because we have three campers in the back so the enemy team has a lot of map control here available. So my goal here is to just play this position. And whenever the Sheridan and the E-75 try to peek the BZ, I'm going to go out and take a shot at both of them. And here's the Sheridan. I'm going to take a peek, but I know that mineshaft is a bitch. So whenever you peek there, the enemy has a pretty decent chance of just shooting there and there's it not going anywhere because there's the wood in, in between. At the E-75, he's staring at me. I don't need to peek him. Why would I? What is the reason to do that? 
There simply isn't any, so I'm just going to stay here, look around a little bit what is going on. The E75 loses interest, which means now I can peek out and take a shot for just a little bit of extra damage. And Sheridan, again, he's peeking up, and the Sheridan's again looking at BTZ, which means I can take another shot at the Sheridan. And that is how you want to ideally play a vehicle like this. Aim your shots if you can, but that's how you do it. He's looking at your teammate, you peek. The enemy is looking at you. Hopefully, your teammate peeks. That is how you want to pull off that entire thing, but you can never really rely on your teammate actually peeking when the enemy is looking at you. Now, I'm just going to keep staying right here because I know that if I were to peek the E75 with a terrible penetration of the E50, I don't really have much chance of going through the front of the third. But here he comes. He's pushing up now. Now I'm going to have to spring into action because he has taken a very forward position. He's obviously take another shot from the tank destroyers on the back and now he has been destroyed and now I have an extra piece of cover right there that I can use against the Sheridan and the now approaching T110 3. Uh, unfortunately the waffle has been destroyed and the 183 is also a one shot which is not very nice I'm gonna have to be very careful especially also because I currently don't know where the Chinese tank destroyer is at the back who can do quite a lot of damage to me so I'm gonna peek out here I'm gonna use this tower as cover. I know that the E3 can't approach me, and the Chinese TD is still back there. So I'm gonna use this tower as cover. I know from a lot of battles of a lot of times getting shot at that here you don't get shot at. Right? It's like that thing. If you get shot at in a place, don't go to that place anymore. Go to another place. If you don't get shot at in that place, that's the place you gotta go. Now the STB is trying to engage. Gotta be very careful here because. This is not very straight, this line, so if I peek around the rock, the E3 has like a very tiny chance of being able to fire at me when I peek down at the AMX. So now, obviously, I'm going to once again wait. I'm not going to engage with an enemy that is directly looking at me. I'm going to hope that that BZ down there is once again going to peek up and have a go at that E3. And that I'm also telling him now to go for that, because if he does that, I can essentially jump the AMX or... I could have jumped the MX because he has now been taken out by the 183. And now I see the E3 is pushing forward. The WZ has come up as well, which means the entire back line there is clear. It means I can now push around the E3, but I actually can't because the WZ is trying to approach me up the hill, which means I'm obviously not going to head on engage the WZ and I'm going to be disappearing off the hill right here. Because if I go forward, I'm going to run into the E3. Boop. Could theoretically take out but with the low penetration is quite a risk so i'm gonna now disappear to the back and the bz goes out as well which means this basically is now unwinnable i would have to kill the e3 first here i'm gonna try to approach him very tiny chance of actually hitting the lower plate and penning that but i did go for it anyway because at this point there isn't much else that can be done and now the only thing i can do is sit behind this house and just wait it out what is going to happen and that's really the entire story of the E50. It does have pretty good armor for a heavy uh, for a medium tank like this, but you're still better off, especially in a tier 10 battle, waiting it out and playing it relatively chill. But now, what can I do? A side scrape here against the E3, attempted at least, but obviously he is going to shoot, like I said in the armor review, he is going to shoot into the side of the turret because that gets weak very quickly. That's the E50. You gotta get through it. And you should definitely get through it because the E50M is amazing. So, don't worry. You'll get through. 